Sacagawea, also Sacagawea or Sacagawea, May 1788 to December 20, 1812, was a Lemmy Shoshone woman who is known for her help to the Lewis and Clark expedition in achieving their chartered mission objectives by exploring the Louisiana Territory. Sacagawea traveled with the expedition thousands of miles from North Dakota to the Pacific Ocean. She helped establish cultural contacts with Native American populations in addition to her contributions to natural history. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2003. Cultural significance Sacagawea is known to have been an important member of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The National American Woman Suffrage Association of the early 20th century adopted her as a symbol of women's worth and independence, erecting several statues and plaques in her memory, and doing much to spread the story of her accomplishments. In 1977, she was inducted into the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame in Fort Worth, Texas. In 2001, she was given the title of Honorary Sergeant, Regular Army, by then President Bill Clinton. Life Reliable historical information about Sacagawea is very limited. She was born into an agadica salmon eater of Lemmy Shoshone tribe between Kenny Creek and Agency Creek near Salmon, Idaho, in Lemmy County. In 1800, when she was about 12 years old, she and several other girls were kidnapped by a group of Hadatsa in a battle that resulted in the deaths of several Shoshone, four men, four women, and several boys. She was held captive at a Hadatsa village near present day Washburn, North Dakota. At about age 13, Sacagawea was sold into a non consensual marriage to Toussaint Charbonneau, a Quebecois trapper living in the village. He had also bought another young Shoshone, known as Otter Woman, as his wife. Charbonneau was variously reported to have purchased both girls to be his wives from the Hadatsa or to have won Sacagawea while gambling. The Lewis and Clark Expedition Sacagawea was pregnant with her first child when the Corps of Discovery arrived near the Hadatsa villages to spend the winter of 1804-05. Captains Meriwether Lewis and William Clark built Fort Mandan. They interviewed several trappers who might be able to interpret or guide the expedition up the Missouri River in the springtime. They agreed to hire Charbonneau as an interpreter because they discovered his wife spoke Shoshone, and they knew they would need the help of Shoshone tribes at the headwaters of the Missouri. Clark recorded in his journal on November 4, 1804, a French man by name Shabona, who speaks the Big Belly language visit us, he wished to hire and informed us his two squars squaws were snake Indians, we and Gao engaged him to go on with us and take one of his wives to interpret the snake language. Charbonneau and Sacagawea moved into the expedition's fort a week later. Clark nicknamed her Janie. Lewis recorded the birth of Jean Baptiste Charbonneau on February 11, 1805, noting that another of the party's interpreters administered crushed rattlesnake rattles to speed the delivery. Clark and other European Americans nicknamed the boy Little Pomp or Pompey. In April, the expedition left Fort Mandan and headed up the Missouri River in pirogues. They had to be pulled against the current and sometimes pulled from the riverbanks. On May 14, 1805, Sacagawea rescued items that had jumped out of a capsized boat, including the journals and records of Lewis and Clark. The Corps commanders, who praised her quick action, named the Sacagawea River in her honor on May 20, 1805. By August 1805, the Corps had located a Shoshone tribe and was attempting to trade for horses to cross the Rocky Mountains. They used Sacagawea to interpret and discovered that the tribe's chief, Kamiwait, was her brother. Lewis recorded their reunion in his journal, shortly after capped. Clark arrived with the interpreter Charbono and the Indian woman, who proved to be a sister of the chief Kamiwait. The meeting of those people was really affecting, particularly between Sahcah Gar We Ah and an Indian woman, who had been taken prisoner at the same time with her, and who had afterwards escaped from the Minotaurs and rejoined her nation. And Clark and his, the intertrepeter and squar who were before me at some distance danced for the joyful sight, and she made signs to me that they were her nation. The Shoshone agreed to barter horses to the group, and to provide guides to lead them over the cold and barren Rocky Mountains. The trip was so hard that they were reduced to eating tallow candles to survive. When they descended into the more temperate regions on the other side, Sacagawea helped to find and cook Kama's roots to help them regain their strength. 
As the expedition approached the mouth of the Columbia River on the Pacific coast, Sacagawea gave up her beaded belt to enable the captains to trade for a fur robe they wished to give to President Thomas Jefferson. Clark's journal entry for November 20, 1805, reads, One of the Indians had on a roab made of two sea otter skins the fur of them were more beautiful than any fur I had ever seen both capped. Lewis and myself endeavored to purchase the roab with different articles at length we procured it for a belt of blue beads which the squire, wife of our interpreter Shibono wore around her waist, sick when the Corps reached the Pacific Ocean, all members of the expedition, including Sacagawea and Clark's black manservant York, voted on November 24 on the location for building their winter fort. In January, when a whale's carcass washed up onto the beach south of Fort Clatsop, Sacagawea insisted on her right to go see this monstrous fish. On the return trip, they approached the Rocky Mountains in July 1806. On July 6, Clark recorded, The Indian woman informed me that she had been in this plain frequently and knew it well. She said we would discover a gap in the mountains in our direction. Which is now Gibbons Pass. A week later, on July 13, Sacagawea advised Clark to cross into the Yellowstone River basin at what is now known as Bozeman Pass. Later, this was chosen as the optimal route for the Northern Pacific Railway to cross the Continental Divide. While Sacagawea has been depicted as a guide for the expedition, she is recorded as providing direction in only a few instances. Her work as an interpreter certainly helped the party to negotiate with the Shoshone, however, her greatest value to the mission may have been simply her presence during the arduous journey, which demonstrated the peaceful intent of the expedition. While traveling through what is now Franklin County, Washington, Clark noted, The Indian woman confirmed those people of our friendly intentions, as no woman ever accompanies a war party of Indians in this quarter. And, The wife of Shibono our interpreter we find reconciles all the Indians, as to our friendly intentions a woman with a party of men is a token of peace. As he traveled downriver from Fort Mandan at the end of the journey, Clark wrote to Charbonneau, you have been a long time with me and conducted yourself in such a manner as to gain my friendship, your woman who accompanied you that long dangerous and fatiguing route to the Pacific Ocean and back deserved a greater reward for her attention and services on that route than we had in our power to give her at the Mandans. As to your little son, my boy Pomp, you well know my fondness of him and my anxiety to take him and raise him as my own child. If you are disposed to accept either of my offers to you and will bring down you son your famn fem, woman, Janie had best come along with you to take care of the boy until I get him. Wishing you and your family great success and with anxious expectations of seeing my little dancing boy Baptist I shall remain your friend, William Clark sick. Topic. Later life and death After the expedition, Charbonneau and Sacagawea spent three years among the Hidatsa before accepting William Clark's invitation to settle in St. Louis, Missouri, in 1809. They entrusted Jean Baptiste's education to Clark, who enrolled the young man in the St. Louis Academy boarding school. Sacagawea gave birth to a daughter, Lizette, sometime after 1810. According to Bonnie, Spirit Wind Walker. Butterfield, historical documents suggest Sacagawea died in 1812 of an unknown sickness. An 1811 journal entry made by Henry Brackenridge, a fur dealer at Fort Manuel Lisa Trading Post on the Missouri River, stated that, both, Sacagawea and Charbonneau were living at the fort. He recorded that Sacagawea had become sickly and longed to revisit her native country. The following year, John Ludig, a clerk at Fort Manuel Lisa, recorded in his journal on December 20, 1812, that the wife of Charbonneau, a snake squaw the common term used to denote Shoshone Indians, died of putrid fever. He went on to say that she was aged about 25 years. She left a fine infant girl. Documents held by Clark show that her son Baptiste already had been entrusted by Charbonneau into Clark's care for a boarding school education, at Clark's insistence Jackson, 1962. A few months later, 15 men were killed in an Indian attack on Fort Lisa, then located at the mouth of the Bighorn River. John Luttig and Sacagawea's young daughter were among the survivors. Toussaint Charbonneau was mistakenly thought to have been killed at this time, but he apparently lived to at least age 76. 
He had signed over formal custody of his son to William Clark in 1813. As further proof that Sacagawea died in 1812, Butterfield writes, an adoption document made in the Orphans' Court Records in St. Louis, Missouri, states, on August 11, 1813, William Clark became the guardian of Towson Charbonneau, a boy about ten years, and Lizette Charbonneau, a girl about one year old, for a Missouri state court at the time, to designate a child as orphaned and to allow an adoption. Both parents had to be confirmed dead in court papers. The last recorded document citing Sacagawea's existence appears in William Clark's original notes written between 1825 and 1826. He lists the names of each of the expedition members and their last known whereabouts. For Sacagawea he writes, Say car ya we o dead. Jackson, 1962. Some American Indian oral traditions relate that rather than dying in 1812, Sacagawea left her husband Charbonneau, crossed the Great Plains, and married into a Comanche tribe. She was said to have returned to the Shoshone in Wyoming in 1860, where she died in 1884. Topic: <laughs> Remains. The question of Sacagawea's final resting place caught the attention of national suffragists seeking voting rights for women, according to author Raymond Wilson. Wilson argues that Sacagawea became a role model whom suffragettes pointed to. With pride, Wilson goes on to note, Interest in Sacagawea peaked and controversy intensified when Dr. Grace Raymond Hebbard, professor of political economy at the University of Wyoming in Laramie and an active supporter of the 19th Amendment, campaigned for federal legislation to erect an edifice honoring Sacagawea's death in 1884. In 1925, Dr. Charles Eastman, a Dakota Sioux physician, was hired by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to locate Sacagawea's remains. Eastman visited many different Native American tribes, to interview elderly individuals who might have known or heard of Sacagawea, and learned of a Shoshone woman at the Wind River Reservation with the Comanche name Porivo, chief woman. Some of the people he interviewed said that she spoke of a long journey wherein she had helped white men, and that she had a silver Jefferson Peace medal of the type carried by the Lewis and Clark expedition. He found a Comanche woman called Takutin who said that Porivo was her grandmother. She had married into a Comanche tribe and had a number of children, including Takutin's father Tikanif. Porivo left the tribe after her husband Jerk Meat was killed. According to these narratives, Porivo lived for some time at Fort Bridger in Wyoming with her sons Basil and Baptiste, who each knew several languages, including English and French. Eventually, she found her way back to the Lemmy Shoshone at the Wind River Indian Reservation, where she was recorded as Basil's mother. This woman, Porivo is believed to have died on April 9, 1884. It was Eastman's conclusion that Porivo was Sacagawea. In 1963, a monument to Sacagawea of the Shoshones was erected at Fort Washakie on the Wind River Reservation near Lander, Wyoming. On the basis of this claim, the belief that Sacagawea lived to old age and died in Wyoming was widely disseminated in the United States in the biography Sacagawea 1933 by University of Wyoming professor and historian Grace Raymond Hebbard. Critics have called into question Hebbard's 30 years of research, which led to the biography of the Shoshone woman. Hebbard presents a stout-hearted woman in her portrayal of Sacagawea that is undeniably long on romance and short on hard evidence, suffering from a sentimentalization of Indian culture. <laughs> <laughs> Children <laughs> Lizette Charbonneau Sacagawea gave birth to a daughter, Lizette Charbonneau, sometime after 1810. However, there is no later record of Lizette among Clark's papers. It is believed that she died in childhood. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau Sacagawea's son Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau continued a restless and adventurous life. He carried lifelong celebrity status as the infant who went with the explorers to the Pacific Ocean and back. When he was 18, he was befriended by a German prince, Duke Paul Wilhelm of Württemberg, who took him to Europe. 
There, Jean Baptiste spent six years living among royalty, while learning four languages and fathering a child in Germany named Anton Fries. After his infant son died, Jean Baptiste came back from Europe in 1829 to live the life of a Western frontiersman. He became a gold miner and a hotel clerk and in 1846 led a group of Mormons to California. While in California he became a magistrate for the Mission San Luis Rey. He disliked the way Indians were treated in the missions and left to become a hotel clerk in Auburn, California, once the center of gold rush activity. After working six years in Auburn, the restless son of Sacagawea left in search of riches in the gold mines of Montana. He was 61 years old, and the trip was too much for him. He became ill with pneumonia and died in a remote area near Danner, Oregon, on May 16, 1866. Topic. Spelling of name A long-running controversy has surrounded the correct spelling, pronunciation, and etymology of the woman's name, however, linguists working on Hadatsa since the 1870s have always considered the name's Hadatsa etymology essentially indisputable. The name is a compound of two common Hadatsa nouns, Kagaga sakaka, bird, and Mia, mia woman. The compound is written as Kagagawia bird woman in modern Hadatsa orthography, and pronounced Sakakawia per meter, is pronounced W between vowels in Hadatsa. The double, A, ah, in the name indicates a long vowel and the diacritics a falling pitch pattern. Hadatsa is a pitch accent language that does not have stress, therefore, in the Hadatsa pronunciation all syllables in Sa'awia are pronounced with roughly the same relative emphasis. However, most English speakers perceive the accented syllable the long, ah, as stressed. In faithful rendering of the name Kagagawia to other languages, it is advisable to emphasize the second, long syllable, not the last, as is common in English. The name has several spelling traditions in English. The origin of each tradition is described in the following sections. Sacagawea Sacagawea is the most widely used spelling of her name, and is pronounced with a hard G sound, rather than a soft G or J sound. Lewis and Clark's original journals mention Sacagawea by name 17 times, spelled eight different ways, each time with a G. Clark used Sacagawea, Sakagagwea, Sarkagawea, and Sakagawea, while Lewis used Sakagawea, Sakagarwea, Sakargarwea, and Sakagarwea. The spelling Sacagawea was established in 1910 as the proper usage in government documents by the United States Bureau of American Ethnology, and as the spelling adopted by the United States Mint for use with the dollar coin, as well as the United States Board on Geographic Names and the U.S. National Park Service. The spelling is used by a large number of historical scholars. Sacagawea. Sakakawea is the next most widely adopted spelling, and the most often accepted among specialists. Proponents say the name comes from the Hadatsa language Sakakawea, bird woman. Charbonneau told expedition members that his wife's name meant, bird woman, and in May 1805 Lewis used the Hadatsa meaning in his journal. A handsome river of about 50 yards in width discharged itself into the Shell River, Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 this stream we called Sahca ga we a or bird woman's river, after our interpreter the snake woman. Sakakawea is the official spelling of her name according to the three affiliated tribes, which include the Hadatsa, and is widely used throughout North Dakota, where she is considered a state heroine, notably in the naming of Lake Sakakawea, the extensive reservoir of Garrison Dam on the Missouri River. The North Dakota State Historical Society quotes Russell Reed's book Sakakawea, The Bird Woman. Her Hadatsa name, which Charbonneau stated meant, Bird Woman, should be spelled, Sakakawea's, according to the foremost Hadatsa language authority, Dr. Washington Matthews. When this name is anglicized for easy pronunciation, it becomes Sakakawea, Sakaka, meaning, Bird, and Wea, meaning, Woman. This is the spelling adopted by North Dakota. The spelling authorized for the use of federal agencies by the United States Geographic Board is Sacagawea. 
Although not closely following Hadatsa's spelling, the pronunciation is quite similar and the geographic board acknowledged the name to be a Hadatsa word meaning bird woman. Nevertheless, Irving W. Anderson, president of the Lewis and Clark Trail Heritage Foundation, argued that the Sakakawea spelling similarly is not found in the Lewis and Clark journals. To the contrary, this spelling traces its origin neither through a personal connection with her nor in any primary literature of the expedition. It has been independently constructed from two Hadatsa Indian words found in the Dictionary Ethnography and Philology of the Hadatsa Indians 1877, published by the Government Printing Office. Compiled by a United States Army surgeon, Dr. Washington Matthews, 65 years following Sacagawea's death, the words appear verbatim in the dictionary as Tsa ka ka, noun, a bird, and Mia wia, bia, noun, a woman. Sacagawea The name Sacagawea or Sacagawea, in contrast to the Hadatsa etymology, is said to be derived from Shoshone Saka Tzawmea, meaning, boat puller, or boat launcher. It is the preferred spelling used by the Lemmy Shoshone people, some of whom claim that her Hadatsa captors merely reinterpreted her existing Shoshone name in their own language, and pronounced it in their own dialect. They heard a name that approximated Sakaka and WIA and interpreted it as bird woman, substituting the hard G K pronunciation for the softer T Z J sound that did not exist in the Hadatsa language. The use of this spelling almost certainly originated from the use of the J spelling by Nicholas Biddle, who annotated the Lewis and Clark Expeditions journals for publication in 1814. This use became more widespread with the publication of the 1902 novel The Conquest, The True Story of Lewis and Clark, written by Eva Emery Dye. It is likely Dye used Biddle's secondary source for the spelling, and her highly popular book made it ubiquitous throughout the United States. Previously, most non scholars had never even heard of Sacagawea. Rosina George, great 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 granddaughter of Kamiwait, says the Agadika tribe of Lemmy Shoshone do not recognize the spelling or pronunciation Sacagawea, and schools and other memorials erected in the area surrounding her birthplace use the spelling Sacagawea. The Lemmy Shoshone call her Sacagawea. It is derived from the Shoshone word for her name, Saka Tzahwiyaa. In his cash book, William Clark spells Sacagawea with a J. Also, William Clark and Private George Shannon explained to Nicholas Biddle published the first Lewis and Clark journals in 1814 about the pronunciation of her name and how the Tz sounds more like a J. What better authority on the pronunciation of her name than Clark and Shannon who traveled with her and constantly heard the pronunciation of her name? We do not believe it is a minatory Hidatsa word for her name. Sakajawea was a Lemmy Shoshone not a Hidatsa. Idaho native John Reese explored the boat launcher etymology in a long letter to the United States Commissioner of Indian Affairs written in the 1920s. It was republished in 1970 by the Lemmy County Historical Society as a pamphlet entitled Madame Charbonneau and contains many of the arguments in favor of the Shoshone derivation of the name. The spelling Sacagawea, although widely taught until the late 20th century, is generally considered incorrect in modern academia. Linguistics professor Dr. Sven Liljeblad from the Idaho State University in Pocatello has concluded that it is unlikely that Sacagawea is a Shoshone word. The term for boat in Shoshone is Saiki, but the rest of the alleged compound would be incomprehensible to a native speaker of Shoshone. The spelling has subsided from general use, although the corresponding soft J pronunciation persists in American culture. Topic: In popular culture. Topic. Artwork The artwork The Dinner Party by feminist artist Judy Chicago features a place setting for Sacagawea in Wing 3 of the installation, titled American Revolution to the Women's Revolution. Topic. Fiction 
Some fictional accounts speculate that Sacagawea was romantically involved with Lewis or Clark during their expedition, however, while the journals show that she was friendly with Clark and would often do favors for him, the idea of a romantic liaison was created by novelists who wrote about the expedition much later. This fiction was perpetuated in the Western film The Far Horizons 1955. In her novel Sacagawea 1984, Anna Lee Waldo explored the story of Sacagawea's returning to Wyoming 50 years after her departure. The author was well aware of the historical research supporting an 1812 death, but she chose to explore the oral tradition. Topic film and television Several movies, both documentaries and fiction, have been made about, or featuring, Sacagawea. The Far Horizons 1955, played by Donna Reed Lewis and Clark, Great Journey West 2002, played by Alex Rice Jefferson's West 2003, played by Cedar Henry Journey of Sacagawea 2004, Bill and Meriwether's Excellent Adventure 2006, played by Crystal Lisney Knight at the Museum 2006, played by Mizuo Peck The Spirit of Sacagawea 2007, Knight at the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian 2009, played by Mizuo Peck Knight at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb 2014, played by Mizuo Peck in 1967, the actress Victoria Vetri, under the name Angela Dorian, played Sacagawea in the episode The Girl Who Walked the West of the syndicated television series, Death Valley Days. <laughs> <laughs> Literature Two early 20th-century novels shaped much of the public perception of Sacagawea. The Conquest, The True Story of Lewis and Clark 1902, was written by American suffragist Eva Emery Dye and published in anticipation of the expedition centennial. The National American Woman Suffrage Association embraced her as a female hero, and numerous stories and essays about her appeared in Leda's journals. A few decades later, Grace Raymond Hubbard published Sacagawea, Guide and Interpreter of Lewis and Clark 1933, to even greater success. Sacagawea has since become a popular figure in historical and young adult novels, including Anna Lee Waldo's novel Sacagawea 1984. Topic music in Philip Glass's Piano Concerto No. 2 after Lewis and Clark, the second movement is entitled Sacagawea. Sacagawea is mentioned in the Schoolhouse Rock song Elbow Room as the guide for Lewis and Clark. Sacagawea is referenced in Stevie Wonder's song Black Man, from the album Songs in the Key of Life 1976. Eric Tingstad and Nancy Rumble's 1988 album Legends includes a piece entitled Sacagawea. In 2010, Italian pianist and composer Alessandra Celletti released Sketches of Sacagawea, a limited edition tribute box set with an album and accompanying book, on Alchemy Lab. Nonfiction The first episode of the History Podcast, The Broadsides, contains discussion of Sacagawea and her accomplishments during the Lewis and Clark expedition. Memorials Coinage In 2000, the United States Mint issued the Sacagawea dollar coin in her honor, depicting Sacagawea and her son, Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau. Because no contemporary image of Sacagawea exists, the face on the coin was modeled on a modern Shoshone Bannock woman named Randiel He Dao Teton. The portrait design is unusual, as the copyrights have been assigned to and are owned by the U.S. Mint. Therefore the portrait is not in the public domain, as most U.S. coin designs are. Topic geography and Parks Lake Sacagawea in North Dakota Sacagawea Memorial Area, at Lemmy Pass, a national historic landmark managed by the National Forest Service and located on the boundary of Montana and Idaho, where visitors can hike the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. The Daughters of the American Revolution DAR, created the memorial area in 1932 to honor Sacagawea for her role in the success of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Mount Sacagawea, Fremont County, Wyoming, and the associated Sacagawea Glacier The Sacagawea Interpretive, Cultural, and Educational Center is a 71-acre park located in Salmon, Idaho, by the rivers and mountains of Sacagawea's homeland. 
It is owned and operated by the City of Salmon, in partnership with the Bureau of Land Management, Idaho Governors Lewis and Clark Trail Committee, Salmon Chalet National Forest, Idaho Department of Fish and Game, and numerous non-profit and volunteer organizations. Sacagawea Heritage Trail, a bike trail in the Tri-Cities, Washington Sacagawea Patera, a caldera on the planet Venus Sacagawea Peak, Wallowa County, Oregon Sacagawea Peak, located in Sacagawea Park, in Gallatin County, Montana Sacagawea Peak, Custer County, Idaho Sacagawea River in Montana Sacagawea State Park in Pasco, Washington Topic Sculpture Astoria, Oregon, at the Clatsop National Memorial, Nettle Landing in Lewis and Clark National Historical Park, a life-size bronze statue of Sacagawea and Jean-Baptiste by Jim Dimitro, named Sacagawea and Baby, is located outside the Visitor Center Bismarck, North Dakota, by Leonard Crunel 1910, with Baby Pomp, on the grounds of the North Dakota State Capitol. In 2003, a replica was given to the National Statuary Hall Collection in the United States Capitol Visitor Center Boise Island. Idaho, installed in front of the Idaho History Museum in July 2003 Charlottesville, Virginia, by Charles Keck 1919, a statue of Meriwether Lewis, William Clark, and Sacagawea Cheney, Washington, by Harold Bellage a statue of Sacagawea is displayed in the Rose Garden in front of the President's House at Eastern Washington University Cody, Wyoming, by Harry Jackson 1980, painted bronze, 114 inches, the statue is located in the Griever Cashman Garden at the Buffalo Bill Historical Center Cody, Wyoming, by Richard V. Greaves 2005, bronze, 72 inches. The sculpture is in the Robbie Powwow Garden at the Buffalo Bill Historical Center Fort Benton, Montana, by Robert Scriver, a sculpture of Sacagawea and her baby, and Captains Lewis and Clark, in the Riverside Sculpture Park Fort Worth, Texas, by Glenna Goodacre 2001, Sacagawea statue outside the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame Godfrey, Illinois, by Glenna Goodacre, at Lewis and Clark Community College, by the same artist who designed the image on the Sacagawea Dollar Great Falls, Montana, by Robert Scriver, bronze three-quarters scale statue of Sacagawea, her baby Jean Baptiste, Lewis, Clark, and the Newfoundland dog Seaman, at the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail Interpretive Center in Great Falls, Montana, Kansas City, Missouri, by Eugene L. Dobb, 2000, Corps of Discovery Monument including life-size figures of Sacagawea and Jean Baptiste, York, and Seaman on the bluff at Clark's Point Overlook, Case Park, Quality Hill, Lander, Wyoming, in local cemetery, 14 miles west on US 287, and then 2 miles west after a turn, turn off about 3 miles south of Fort Washakie, there is a tall statue of Sacagawea, 6 feet, with tombstones downhill of her, husband, and two children, there also is a monument on site Lewiston, Idaho, multiple statues, including one along the main approach to the city Longview, Washington, a statue of Sacagawea and Jean Baptiste was placed in Lake Sacagawea Park near the Hemlock. Street footbridge in 2005 Mobridge, South Dakota. The Sacagawea Monument is an obelisk erected at the supposed site of her death, which honors Sacagawea as a member of the Shoshone tribe and for her contribution to the Corps of Discovery Expedition. The associated marker dates her death as December 20, 1812, and states that her body must be buried somewhere near the site of Old Fort Manuel, located 30 miles north of the marker. Portland, Oregon, by Alice Cooper 1905, Sacagawea and Jean Baptiste was unveiled July 6, 1905 and moved to Washington Park, April 6, 1906 Portland, Oregon, by Glenna Goodacre, at Lewis and Clark College, permanently installed on September 5, 2004 Richland, Washington, by Tom McClelland 2008, St. Louis, Missouri, by Harry Weber 2002, a statue of Sacagawea with her baby in a cradle board is included in the diorama of the Lewis and Clark Expedition that is on display in the lobby of the St. Louis Drury Plaza Hotel, located in the historical International Fur Exchange Building Three Forks, Montana, in Sacagawea Park, by Mary Michael, statue honoring Sacagawea, entitled Coming Home, is built in the area where Sacagawea was abducted as a young girl and taken to Mandan lands Wind River Indian Reservation, Wyoming. According to oral tradition, Sacagawea left her husband Toussaint Charbonneau and fled to Wyoming in the 1860s. Her alleged burial site is located in the reservation cemetery, with a gravestone inscription dating her death as April 9, 1884. However, oral tradition also indicates a woman named Porivo, recorded as Basil's mother, occupies that grave. 
Topic: Ships. USS Sacagawea, one of several United States ships named in her honor. Topic: See also. Sacagawea's nickname equals equals notes